Hello, today in Lessons in Life and Love, we go into Reality Check and Rebirth, Handling Anxiety and Depression, Learning Meditation to Help Ease Those Issues, Having a Plan B When Times Get Tough, Working in the Now, and Moving Forward with a Mindset for Success. Welcome to Lessons in Life and Love with Rihanna Milne, where we show you how to have the positive mindset for success in all life areas. It's time to have the life you desire and the love you deserve. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Season 3, Show 76 of the Lessons in Life and Love podcast. I'm your host and Global Life and Love Coach, Rihanna Milne, coming to you every Friday on the LessonsInLifeAndLove.com podcast and my app, Lessons in Life and Love, on the go. I'm all about helping you transform your life in all areas into one that you're passionate about and to help you attract and have the love that you deserve. I'm on a mad mission to change the way the world loves. So you'll learn how to have emotionally healthy, evolved and conscious love and how to avoid toxic, painful, traumatic relationships which seem too prevalent today. It's time to create that life that you desire and to have the love that you deserve. So at any time during the week you find yourself struggling, just reach out to me to have a life and love transformation discovery session. Now on special promotion at rihannamilne.com. So let's dive in love angels and transformers. Today we're going to continue the thoughts and processing around the coronavirus. I know probably everyone's starting to get sick of hearing it. However, it is foremost on everybody's mind around the globe. This is a global trauma, guys. You know, when I talk about childhood trauma, of course, one of the 10 traumas is community trauma. And when I usually do a podcast interview or summit, I talk about the 10 traumas and I use, for example, mass shootings, our school shootings, and our mother nature disasters like hurricanes, floods, fires, volcanoes. We certainly have had our share of these natural disasters wiping out full neighborhoods in the past few years. I lived through Hurricane Sandy. I remember huddled up in my house in Egg Harbor Township, New Jersey. It was a ranch and I was sleeping in the hallway because they're there, what's the safest place? And in my back bedroom, I had right outside my window, a full acre of huge, huge oak trees. So if one of those were to snap and break, it could have easily fallen on that part of the roof, which was over the bedroom, master bath, and my closet. And then on the front side, there was also big oak trees. So where was I the safest? In my mind, I thought, all right, I'll sleep right in the center. And I made myself a fort. So that fort building with my brothers as I was growing up really paid off. And I had the sleeping bag, the blankets and water and food and the radio with flashlights around me and backup. Yeah, I had a full fort. Reading materials if I wanted, my phones, a couple of them charged up and ready to go. So I had communication with the outside world. And then we had Hurricane Irma. And I found myself in my closet again to stay safe. Safety has been something that has always been important to me. I think it is to most people, but some are more sensitive to it than others. And of course, it goes back to our childhood conditioning. Did we feel safe? And I have to say, you know, examining my past childhood is because my father had to be on the road all the time. We did not know it at the time, but he was FBI and CIA. So my dad was like James Bond. And we didn't know where he was. We did not know when he was coming home. My mother raising five kids without her knowing where her husband was. And I was close to my dad. I was fourth out of five. And I remember asking quite a lot, when's daddy coming home? And she would say, I don't know, you know, in disgust. So that security of, is my dad okay? And when we were going through family things, like where is my dad at time of need? That is something that triggers back to me during some kind of safety issue. Now, during 9-11, I was a mom at the time, and we were in Ventnor, and I remember hearing this from my boyfriend. I was coming out of a meeting, and we were in there from 9.30 to 11, and right after that, I was supposed to give a speech at one of the casinos for an organization, and he calls me. He goes, don't you know what happened? And he goes, where are you going? I said, I'm going to give my speech. Why? And he goes, no, you're not. We may be in mass world war. I'm like, what? And then when he explained to me what happened with the Twin Towers falling and the plane going through, I was, I was in shock. First thing is, I've got to protect my kids. I got to get money out of the bank. The banks will be closing. I got to go to the markets right now. 
because things will be closing. So I go right into mom defensive security mode, make sure my family's going to be okay. I'm calling the casino as I go. I said, I cannot be there. I can't imagine anybody showing up at this time. I cannot give a speech. I have to protect my family. That's the type of action I snapped into and I thought it was the right move at the time. And then later that afternoon, after I got everything home, I went back to the office to close it up properly. And I still had on a royal blue suit for work that day. And the Channel 6 News had called me ABC. And they're like, can you come over and do a news report? I said, when? They said, now. And I said, yep, I've got a royal blue suit on. It's perfect for television. We want you to talk about trauma. So it's like, how do I come on and calmly talk about trauma when I'm traumatized myself? That feeling kind of came back to me in this world crisis that we're in, that we're all scared. We want our families to be safe. I know my son-in-law, Preston Smiles, was off giving a speech in Australia. And I kept asking Alexi, is Preston home yet? Is Preston home? Because I wanted to make sure he got home safe to the kids and my daughter out in LA, that fear of, is he okay, was going through me. So I was asking her if Preston was okay because they were stopping planes and people coming in from European countries and all over the world. I'm like, is he going to get out of there? Get Preston out of there. So yes, he's home safe. And that was important to me. So knowing that my families are in their homes and safe is a better comfort for me. However, it's still a scary time for our world, our families, our friends, and my clients. But today, I want to talk about the mindset for comfort and safety and security because security is a false notion, right? I mean, none of us were expecting this kind of a global outbreak pandemic months ago. You know, we're going about our lives like everything's going to be fine, just like it is every other day. Yes, we have our storms, our floods, our fires, which are always horrendous disasters, but something that affects us all as human beings around the world, and we're all affected everywhere. This is quite different. How do you handle this within your home and your families right now? I wanted to mention it's all about the mindset. And I call it the mindset for success, but it's the mindset also to calm yourself down, to be more positive, to be more proactive than reactive. And how do you get your mind to convince your body to stay safe? Because again, going back to childhood traumas, if you had any issues around safety and security, you're going to be quite triggered during this time. You're going to feel some anxiety, maybe heaviness in your chest. That's a lot of times where anxiety shows up or could show up in headaches or an upset stomach. And you might think, oh my God, I got the flu. And instead you might have signs of panic and anxiety. So we want to use the mind to calm the body down, right? That's really important. And we have to use the mindset to put us back into a rational place because we can all catastrophize what is going on. Yes, it's horrible. Yes, the news is keeping us in a high state of alert. However, it is their job to state the facts and let us be aware. We are all in this feeling of living a life in fear like we were in America around 9-11. And those of us old enough to remember that, that was like quite a disaster. Me living in Jersey, I opened up my therapy center for quite a while to help anyone for free that was directly related to 9-11, whether it was their friends or families, loved ones in any way, so they could help process their trauma. And I kept being brought back into the news four times actually to help people understand the cycle of fear and trauma and pain and panic. The first thing is shock. What is this really happening? And when you kind of see it in one country, you think, wow, this is horrible for their country, but you don't expect it to blow up as fast as it did around the world. And that's the scariest part. Because when you don't have control in your life, who has control? We often say we don't have control in our life. Mother Nature has control. God has control. Whoever you see him, her, or it to be, we can't stop the storms. We probably could help control the fires, but the hurricanes, the tornadoes, these are Mother Nature catastrophes. We have to look at what is today bringing us because every day is a change and we have to get used to the fact that there's always going to be change in our life. Instead of looking at it as a scary thing, we can look at it as something to be cherished, as a challenge. 
Like what's new for me today? What exciting will happen for me today? Every day is new. Every day is fresh. Every day is a chance for you to be or do something else you would like to do. We have to ask ourselves, are we living in the now? Living in the now means the present. We're living for today. We're not thinking too far ahead. Because I always say in the future is where lies anxiety. And if you're worrying too much about the past, that's where depression lies. If you're living in the right now, ask yourself, am I okay? Yes. And can I breathe? Yes. Do I have running water, flushing toilets? Yes. Am I in a home? Most of us are in a home or in a safe car or is our families okay? And I know some of you may have friends or families that are sick right now with the virus. So my heart and my prayers go out to you every day. I'm praying for strength and healing and answers from our terrific scientific brothers and sisters that are working around the clock, our doctors, our nurses, our volunteers. Now our military is jumping in to help out. I can say, you know, God bless America and God bless everybody else around the world who is stepping up and handling the medical crisis in the ways that they know how. And they're working tirelessly to find the answers. We all have those collective prayers and feelings of gratitude going out to these folks, doing what we can to keep our children and our own mindsets positive. That's the mindset we have to be in. So when you get scared or feeling the anxiety, go to the moment of the now and say, I'm fine right now. I'm safe right now. I'm looking around. I'm in my house. I've got my family, my kids, my friends are okay. You know, go into blessings and gratitude mode. What do you have? What are you grateful for? What is working well for you today? Always think about gratitude when you get scared or think of loss. You know, don't think, will I lose something? If a hurricane hits me, say, what do I have right now? What is my plan B? If a hurricane comes and hits my home, what is my plan B? Plan B was I could probably go live with my daughters, right? My plan B is as long as I'm safe, we're all happy. So, I mean, you have to say, what is the worst case scenario and plan for plan B. And if you have that in mind, that's not so scary. Okay. It would suck that I lose my house that I love and adore. And I just hope that I would escape safe. And then I would go live with my daughters, right? That's the worst case scenario, plan B. I can live with that. That would definitely work. There's insurance to pay off the house or rebuild the house. So that's in place. So what's the worst that could happen? I lose material things. Well, you know, at the end, when we die, we don't take the material things with us anyway. They're here for us to enjoy them as we're living in the now. Remember that it comes down to what's most important, friends, family, living for your dreams and your goals and taking some risks so that it can grow. You know, you want your conscious mind open to new opportunities during a time like this. People can say it's also a time of rebirth, right? We're all home, forced with more time on our hands. I personally love it. I've had a to-do list for over a year that I'm getting to and getting some new things done. I think it's fabulous that I have some extra time now, although recently I've been handling calls and emails from my clients that have been uh, needing to talk with me if they're anxious or upset or depressed. I work time in for that too. But it does give me extra time to work on new projects, to think outside of the box. What's my next goal in business? What's my next dream? I've hired on a new graphic arts team because I've needed headers forever, replaced on my social media. It's like, yeah, 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 I'll get to it because it wasn't the most important thing. But now I can slow down and look at everything and say, where do I want to grow to? What do I want to do different? What do I want to do next? I'm really happy to have those extra time, right? And some of you don't work at home, so this is brand new for you. If you are working at home, some tips are make sure you keep your schedule. Wake up, go to bed at the same time because regular patterns of sleep are really important, especially during times of stress. So keep your whole family on the regular cycle. Don't sit and just veg out and eat in front of the TV. You don't want to fill your body with carbs, ice cream, sodas, bad foods that are going to make you feel sluggish and horrible. Try to stay with as healthy eating as you can. 
And if you're at home, get out to walk two to three times a day around your block if it's a safe place to be. If there's a lot of close quarters and a lot of people, we know we have to keep social distance. So only do that if that is safe. Put music on a lot. Dance around, exercise inside your home, go into the spare bedroom or the office, close the door, do your sit-ups, your push-ups. Put music on, dance to the music, you know, whatever it is you have to do, do some movement as well. Start your day with meditation. Now, I have taught meditation before, but I will teach it now again because it's important for you to know. It is proven in science and quantum physics that meditation does ease anxiety, depression, lowers blood pressure, lowers the cortisol, which is a fight or flight response, super important right now, and lowers blood pressure. If you're prone to be anxious, your blood pressure may go up. So it does those five wonderful things. And then it also increases the dopamine and serotonin levels of your brain, which are your high and happy chemicals. So we want to meditate at least 15 minutes a day during an anxious time, like what's going on. Do it also before bed. Okay, because a lot of you are watching the news in the morning, maybe again throughout the day, and then once before bed. Make sure that you are meditating. If you watch the news and get the updates, turn it off. Maybe put on some calm music or ocean waves. You know me, I love the ocean. And, you know, do the meditation. Now, what my clients and I do is called divine spiritual meditation. So I'm going to talk you through that. You don't need to sit on the floor with your legs crossed and be uncomfortable. I want you to be comfortable. I sit in an easy chair and look out at my lake. So just sit there, put one hand inside of the other, connect your thumbs. And the first step, write down the number seven. It's seven breaths. You're going to breathe in your nose very deep and fill your body with air. Hold it and count in your head to a count of seven. Then blow it out real slow, and then repeat and do it seven times. That's step one. Step two has two steps. Part 2A is attitude of gratitude. So in your head, you are saying, and again, your eyes are closed, you're just breathing, and you start out in your head saying, thank you for my many blessings. Thank you for, and then for me, it's like a bullet list. My children, my grandchildren, our health, our homes, our safety, our income, our businesses. And then I go to me, you know, my partner, my ability to make a difference in the world, my clients healing, whatever you're grateful for, my home, whatever, put that in that list. Now, part 2B is where you ask for what you want, but you have to ask for it as if you've received it. Not begging for what you want, you ask for what you want in a way that you've received it. So I say, Thank you, God, for giving me safety for my family. Thank you, God, for giving daughter Alexi healthy twins and she having a healthy, safe delivery. So whatever you want to happen, you're thanking it and believing in it and praying on it each day so it will happen for you. Part three is visualization. Here we put one to two goals of things that you want to happen for you and in your life. So I wouldn't say do more than two visualizations. I would do two. If you're praying on a certain home that you saw that you would love to get, praying for the health of someone, you see them walking and laughing and dancing again, you know, whatever you want to happen, visualize it as if it's happening and have the feeling around the visualization. The feeling is really important. You're putting that vibe and that energy out to the world that this is yours. This should be happening. This person is healing. You two are happy. You two are together. If you're a couple and you're struggling, see you and your partner really enjoying your life, doing things that you used to do together, whether that was like dancing is always fun for me, dancing or traveling or going to your favorite vacation spot and you're romantic and you're holding hands. Go back to a time that was pleasurable, but you're at this age and you're doing it again and feel that feeling of happiness and peace and joy. That's visualization. And then the fourth step is a question. And you say, dear divine or dear God or whoever is your higher power, what do you want me to know? And this is you tapping into your own higher consciousness or we call our evolved self, our best self or our God self. And it is tapping into the intuition. When you do this on a daily basis, 
your conscious awareness and your level of intuition really, really goes up. And I mean a lot. It's really cool to see this work. So you just wait for the answers. Meanwhile, you can go back to the deep breathing. When your alarm on your phone goes off, you know, in 15 seconds, your meditation is done. I suggest like a nice little Chinese chime that sounds nice to wake up to. And make sure you do turn your phone off before you start your meditation so you're not bothered by phone or text and breaks you out of this uh, peaceful mode. And you will find, as it proves in science, that meditation keeps you peaceful for eight to nine hours out of a day. And that's why I suggest you do it in the morning at least, and then if you want a second time at night. And this will help calm the brain and the body cells. If you can get your whole family to meditate, this would be a beautiful new habit for you guys to create together. And I did meditation with my kids in school so that parents don't think your kids will think it's weird. Trust me, my kids love doing meditation in my office. In the schools, it was called Miss Rihanna's Relaxation Room. And I used a lot of music therapy as well. Uh, Louis Miguel was my favorite, and I don't talk or understand Spanish, but the melody was really great for me and my kids. It just super calmed me, and yet brought me joy at the same time. It's just beautiful music. So thank you, Louis, for your beautiful music. I have every CD, <laughs> so I'm a true fan. But whatever makes you feel joy and happiness, this is what I want you to tap into for yourself and for your family. Do please practice the meditation. And then I want you to think as you're meditating and reflecting, what can I do to grow during this period? What can I create? Can I be inventive and invent a new business or a new piece of art? What is it that you want to do, right? We want to really see what good we can find out of a bad situation. Remember, things change minute to minute, hour to hour, day by day. We don't know what's going to happen. So to live in the what if this happens mode keeps you in high anxiety all the time. The best thing is to keep your mind busy. And this is why for my coaching clients, I say this is a perfect time to do coaching with me. I'm offering a huge promotional sale, 50% off a lot of my coaching to help you all out. And on top of that, I'm taking 10% of that investment that you give me to donate it to a local charity that helps women and children. Normally, 10% of my program goes to help women and children of domestic violence anyway but I'm just going to add another 10% for this. What can you do to be busy, busy your mind and yet grow? My coaching is all about life and love transformation. It's the best time to do this right now while you have time. I'm encouraging my people like to take that leap of faith and say, yup, I'm gonna do me right now at this level. And when I invest with Rihanna, I'm also giving to a needy cause at the same time. And it's a great way to feel this is something I can do. I'm doing self-care right now, which is super important when you're in a crisis to do self-care. I always say, ask the question, what can I do? Not what can't I do? How can I be proactive, not reactive? React with fear, anxiety, it's all on the dark side of life. Proactive is living in the light, feeling joy despite the situation. If you haven't read the Viktor Frankl book about him surviving the Holocaust, that would be a great book to read right now because he was saying over and over, it's my mindset, what I thought that got me through everything and kept me positive despite the pain. It's a brilliant book. It is ageless and you really should read it. It will change the way you look at things. Let's take advantage of where you can do opportunities for growth and change and personal improvement. The obstacles that you think about, most of them are inside your own mind. You're creating them for yourself. So we want to change the mindset around that. Despite this horrible situation that we are all in as human beings, neighbors to neighbors, no matter if we're young or old, black, white, Chinese, it doesn't matter. Straight, LGBT, we are all brothers and sisters trying to do our best in a bad situation. So the calmer you can be, the calmer your children will be, and you don't catastrophize it 
and blow it up to the world. Let's stay safe, stay smart, but stay centered, okay? Practice and have faith. If you don't have faith, it's a great way to learn some spiritual concepts. I'm not talking religion, spiritual concepts. Books by Wayne Dyer, the Dalai Lama, Deepak Chopra, Marianne Williamson, The Course of Miracles, Abraham Hicks, Reverend Michael Beckwith. I could name tons of my mentors, Tony Robbins. Anything that will make you feel positive and more spiritually connected, now is a time to learn spirituality. And please do teach your children spiritual concepts because it keeps them faith-based in a time of crises. Very, very important. Do try to tap into purpose and give back and serve in some way if you can. I know we're all limited. You don't want to do anything that we're breaking the pattern of quarantine. They say that's the best way to break this virus right now. So we have to do our parts and not be selfish and quarantine ourselves, right? Or walk in an open park where nobody else is to get your fresh air. Just go in where you know that you couldn't hurt anyone or be hurt. We have to do our part. But if you can give back in some way, and then maybe the safest way is through a donation, then that would be the way to do it. Let's think rebirth. What do you really want to do in this life now that we've been looking at destiny, our fate in a very real way? Are you living authentically? Do you do work that you love? If you're not, you say, wow, I'd love to be a health coach and I'm a nurse and I want to get out of nursing, then be a health coach after this crisis, of course, you're probably busy. But I am mentoring coaches right now who are just starting out or struggling and going global. And I was global my first year of coaching and I'm in a lot of different areas and I absolutely love what I do. I've had amazing coaches along the way. I think I've had six coaches that I've invested in and I would be glad to mentor you and help you in your growth to grow your business. Talk to me, just email me, rihannamilne at gmail.com and I will be glad to talk to you about mentoring for coaching. It's a fabulous business. So what is it that you love to do? Are you living and working your passion? If not, let's discuss how you're going to do that. Business coaching is a part of life coaching. Many of my clients that sign up for the Life and Love Transformation Program want to start a business. So we do marketing ideas. I help them get their businesses launched. Is that something you want to do? Start your ideas, get it down on paper. You have two to three weeks if you're in isolation to get your project down from your head and your heart on paper and start a solid plan. Do we look at this as a blessing or a tragedy? Yes, in many ways, it is a tragedy. We have to be realistic. Too many people have died. It's a scary time. I get it. It is our reality this moment. However, in this moment, we can also find the blessings. We can also tap into our gratitude. We can think, what can we do to help others and not what can't we do? We can think of what can I do for myself for self-love and care, not what can't I do? We can think of what can I do to grow and learn, not darn, I got to sit around at home. What, I'm going to watch TV all day? Well, people can, or you choose to be proactive and do something really important with this time. And if you're not working and you're retired, maybe you clean your house, clean out the kitchen cupboards, clean out your closets and get your donation piles together, right? I mean, there's always something we can do to keep our lives positive and moving forward. What changes do you want to make? I mean, what rebirth can you rekindle inside yourself? Who do you want to be right now? Very often people live in a fog. This is clearing the fog. This is a big wake up call. It's like, whoa, hello. Are we living our life to our max? Or what I call living large? Are we living large? Are we living the life that we really want? And if we're not, we got to say, what is it that we're going to do right now to cleanse the old habits, get rid of them and reincorporate some new habits, new ideas, new places that we want to go and be and do. What can you do that's been hanging on your to-do list forever? And I want you to really start by reframing your thoughts and your way of being and ask, who is it I really want to be? And put that into your meditations and see what comes to you every day. When you start clearing your mind and lessening the cortisol 
and opening your way of being, thinking, and living, then your, your creativity surges. I can't tell you, like these creative ideas just pop into my head. Oh, I'm going to do this. Oh, I want to do this. And I just go and do it. Right. I mean, but that's the mindset for success. You have no fear. It's like, how many days do I have alive on this earth? We don't know. Are you living large? Are you doing what you want? And if you're not, let's start thinking about now and pulling out a journal. Who is it you want to be? What is it you want to do? Let's get your goals and actions together. And if I can help you, I would be honored to be your life and love coach. Let's get this party rolling, guys. The clock is ticking on our lives. Let's do something really profound to help ourselves, to find our purpose, to be profound and make a difference in our world. And right now you can make a difference in your family's life and in your life with self-care, love, calm, peaceful thinking and way of being. Okay. All right. Love angels. That is all we have time for today. I want to thank you for being with me and I appreciate you sharing the love by sharing the link on this podcast and also by sharing the mission of helping to change the way the world loves. So if you found some value in this message, please share this podcast with those that you love and care about. And also while you're on the platform of your choice, especially iTunes, please leave a five-star rating and review us podcasters truly appreciate it. If there's ever a topic you would like me to address, just email me at rihannamilne at gmail.com. And of course, while you're at home and during the week, go to my website, rihannamilne.com. There's the free ebook, free love test, and my free book chapter downloads of Live and Love Beyond Your Dreams, my five-star rated books, those you should read while you're at home. It will change the way you think and the way you love. Trust me, they're amazing. Please be proactive, enjoy your life. Remember, reach out to me for help during the week if you need it, right through the website, rihannamilne.com on the Contact Me page. And as always, guys, I am here to help you create that life you desire and to have the love that you deserve. Have a very beautiful and blessed and safe and healthy week. We want to thank you for joining us on this episode of Lessons in Life and Love with Coach Rihanna Milne. Go to RihannaMilne.com for more resources. If you're really ready to take action to improve your life or love situation, apply now for a session with Rihanna. And remember, it's time to have the life you desire and the love you deserve.